Hello YouTubers! I'm going to show you how to download Minecraft EDU, install and run it uh, for your Ubermix or Ubuntu machine. So let's get started. Go to minecraftedu.com and I assume you've already purchased the licenses necessary. So go ahead and log in and once you've logged in you just scroll down to you see the download Minecraft EDU and there's a new version, the 1.7.10 Classroom Edition Stable, that's out. So let's go ahead and download that now. You'll see a little dialog box pop up. Click Save. It's going to take a couple minutes. All right, once we've got that going, we need to make sure we have another file ready to go for our... Uh, to be able to open up Minecraft EDU. It's called Open JDK Java 6 Runtime. Go ahead and go to your Ubuntu Software Center and just type that in if you don't already have it. If you have Ubermix, it's already installed. If you don't, if you're just running Ubuntu, uh, go ahead and search for it and install it. It's really simple. It just takes a, uh, a minute or so to install. And then once we have finished downloading our Minecraft EDU file, uh, we need to set it as default. All right, so once we've got uh, the file downloaded, we're going to right click on it and scroll down to properties at the bottom. There's a second tab there called permissions and click allow executing file as program. It's really important. That's one time we have to do it only the first time. Let's go over it one more time. We scroll down to properties, click on that tab and then make sure it says allow executing file as program so then we'll just double click it and there's a couple tricks here uh, there's a couple tricks to this to this uh, opening up Minecraft EDU on Ubermix one is that uh, we have to have that open JDK 6 runtime you can see I'm just following the dialog boxes and I'm not gonna select the server tool because I'm gonna install this on a student machine so I could change the location, but I'm just going to leave it as the default suggested. I already have it installed, so I'm just going to take a backup. So it has a backup file of what I was already doing. It takes a couple seconds to run uh, the installer, and then we'll just click Continue. So we have to make sure we have that Java JD6 runtime to open Minecraft EDU. Now this box is great because it has the close installer and open launcher, but what happens once you've closed the installer and you either didn't mean to or you have another session or whatever? Uh, the trick is, is that Minecraft EDU is loaded into your desktop folder. Even though we've downloaded it, it's in the desktop folder. Okay, now we have to click on the properties and do that same uh, dialog box there. It says allow executing file as program and make it default to open with the OpenJDK Java 6 runtime. It has to be default. Otherwise, if you don't have the Java JD6 runtime, it wants to open under the Archive Manager. So we make sure that's default. We'll close that, and then we can just double-click it, and then it opens up the, the start. Now, something I've learned with Minecraft uh, and just Ubuntu in general is that if I click on things, it will take time to start going. It doesn't give me like a spinny wheel or any kind of notification. So I click Start Minecraft EDU and I leave the login as Minecraft EDU and then click Login. And you can see it looks like nothing's happening, but uh, it's actually starting. And that little box, it allows us to reopen the launcher, which is a great addition, but we don't need to reopen it because it's actually it's actually working. Now you see it opened in kind of like a small window, but it's taking up the whole screen. If that happens, you can just click on the little minimize box in the top left and then open it again, that minimize box, and then it will go to a full screen like this. So now let's just type our name. And we can select if we want to play single player or multiplayer. If you have a server set up, you can just select multiplayer and then you click down here where it says add server and type in your server address. I'll do another video on how to start a server. Mm -hmm. You can name it whatever you want and then just type server address, but if we want to play right now multi-single player, uh, and if this is your first time, you're not going to have any worlds loaded. So you want to click Create New World, 
title it whatever you want. So I'll title it New World and for this video, something simple. You can change the game mode and then pick more world options and then just click Create the New World. And while that's loading, uh, it's important to know that Minecraft EDU, uh, it's only really good in multiplayer mode because of the teacher tools. If you play single player, it works and everything works great, but you don't have control over what the students are doing. You can't freeze them. You're really limited in your options and it, it behaves a lot more like uh, regular Minecraft. So the beauty of Minecraft EDU is in the multiplayer mode where you have the teacher controls. Now, if you're using a little netbook like I am, uh, and it's running a little slow and um, kind of chunky, you can turn the clouds off, you can change the render distance, you basically change things like the graphics to uh, make it where the computer's not working as hard. That's, that's if you're running like a, I'm running an Acer V5131. Uh, if you change those level, um, the levels of your video, settings then you can um, it should make it run smoother and to be honest only your students that are really crazy about Minecraft will notice or even be bothered but the fact that they get to play it in your class is a huge deal so let's save it quit it and let's try and reopen it now to make sure we can we know how to open it once we've we've downloaded it we've installed it and then now it's like okay where is it we'll go back to our normal screen if you remember it's in our desktop which on mine is a folder called desktop so I have to click on any of these folders so I click home and then over on the left side we'll see the desktop folder right there and then we'll just we can um, right click to make sure it's still going to use the open JDK 6 runtime and that dialog box and the properties should should still be clicked we'll just do a double check it's clicked make sure it's there and then now we can just double click it and it will open and as soon as we see the start sort of dialog window open, we know that we're golden. Just like that. It's that easy. Uh, you know, thanks for watching. And I'll do a server video next. Bye.